Hi there, I'm Miss Mia, your teen services librarian here at Darien Library, and I am so excited to be back with another round of book talks, this time for summer 2021. I'm once again joined by the Middlesex Middle School Reading Ambassadors, a selection of sixth and seventh grade students, all of whom read a book off of our book list and wrote their own book talks for them. Keep watching this video to hear about all the books we read, loved, and recommend for you this summer. To kick it off, here are your sixth grade reading ambassadors. Hi, I'm Harrison Diltz, and I want to tell you a little bit about One Last Shot by John David Anderson, author of Post It. What if the task of keeping your family together was on you? Malcolm Greeley knows what this feels like. Unable to keep up with his dad's love for sports and determination to win, he feels like the ruin he calls family is on him. That is, until he learns about miniature golf. Finally, he's found a sport he loves, and his dad can't even make him compete. However, a few days later, he signed up for tournaments galore and has a weird and wacky coach. With new friends being made, new problems surfacing, and tensions rising, will Malcolm Greeley be able to nail his shots and propel himself to the top? One Last Shot is a great book for anybody who likes books about sports, friendships, family, and social issues. Hi, I'm Elio Kate, and my book is Lazzo by Darcy Little Badger. Can you use them in ghosts? Well, hopefully not, but 17-year-old Lazzo, Ellie for short, can. In this book, Ellie lives in everyday America. If America was mixed with magic and creatures you hear of in fables and fairy tales, including the ones your parents told you to make sure you went to bed on time. This story kicks off when Ellie's cousin, Trevor, dies unexpectedly in a car crash and comes to her in a dream, telling her to protect his family from his killer. And that's exactly what Ellie does. Ellie travels to the strange town of Willoughby, Texas, along with her family to help Trevor's wife and infant. While she's there, she finds evidence of foul play. Ellie investigates this mystery with her best friend, Jay, and her ghost dog, Kirby, except she faces some challenges from the town of Willoughby, including a weird behavior of the town and a flashy doctor with friends in very high places. This book is a fair paranormal fiction mystery with loads of plot twists and turns to keep you on your toes. This story will make you scream, jump, cry, and laugh, and I promise you will love it. Hi, I'm Jake, and this is my book talk. What happens when you leave everything behind in your homeland to go see your father in a foreign land? Well, in Letters from Cuba by Ruth Bihar, this is what happens to Esther, a Jewish girl from Poland. Esther moves to Cuba to be with her father and to help him raise money by peddling in the streets of Agramont. The money will go to helping the rest of the family, her mother, three brothers, sister, and grandmother to get them to Cuba. This story is told from the perspective of Esther, who is writing letters to her sister Malka. Every new chapter is a letter about the new friendships and trouble she faces in Cuba. Also, when she starts peddling with her father, they start making money quicker. Along the way, Esther meets Rivka Rubenstein, the fabric seller in Havana. Esther buys some fabric and decides to start sewing a dress for herself and ends up making some for her friends in the neighborhood. Will she and her father be able to get her family to Cuba in time? Find out in Letters from Cuba by Ruth Bihar. I would recommend this book to anyone who has read Alan Gratz books, World War II books, and people who can withstand a bit of suspense. Thank you. Hi, I'm Arya. This is Alone by Megan E. Freeman. Lots of books have the protagonists part of something bigger, with many friends that they can rely on, people that help them get through things. But what if that was stripped away and you really were by yourself? No knowledge of what has happened and why had no one has come. In Alone, Maddie has to endure things that most people never will from nature's problems to people who would kill a kitten without batting an eye. But that is not even the hardest challenge. With only the neighbor's dog, George, some leftover supplies, and endless books from the library, she has to survive, or at least until some help arrives. The authorities have to come back once they realize she was left behind, right? Maddie only realizes what the true challenge is when she finds something left behind. She realizes what the hardest part of surviving by herself for years is. The story starts with her in middle school, but by the time the sparse first story is over, she should be in high school if she had a different life. 
Maddie changes from feeling guilty about taking things from others' houses to throwing rocks through windows because of some people have things that some others don't. She understands things and sees the world in a different light through the story. If you like to read survival stories, I would recommend this. It was called The Racers by Neil Bascom. In the years before World War I, Mercedes came out with a new race car, the Silver Arrow. Hitler's cars were undefeated, but a race car driver, Rene Dreyfus, must go against the Silver Arrows and try to beat them. I would recommend this book for pe the people who enjoy historical fiction, war novels, and books about racing. I really like this book. It kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I hope you like it too. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Emily, and today I'm here to talk to you about the book Clues to the Universe by Christina Lee. It's 1983 in Sacramento, California, and Rosalind Garotti is a 7th grade science nerd who loves NASA launches, space, and the idea of launching her very own rocket with her dad. That is, until he was killed unexpectedly in a horrible drunk driving accident. Benjamin Burns is a 7th grade comic book nerd who's obsessed with the comic series Spacebound. He one day finds a suspicious sketch from the series that suggests that his dad wrote the series. There's just one problem. His dad walked down nine years ago, and he has absolutely no way to contact him. But when Ro transfers into Benji's school and science class, she becomes his science partner. Both Ro and Benji are searching for a connection to their lost fathers. So after accidentally swapping folders on the first day of school, Ro and Benji decide to make a bet. Benji helps Ro with finishing building and launching her rocket, and Ro will help Benji find a way to reunite him with his long-lost dad. While working on the mission, the two form a pair of unlikely friendship. But what happens if they never find Benji's dad? What happens if they can't launch the rocket correctly? Or even, what happens when the mission ends? What then? Ro and Benji go through a lot together. They face bullying, each other's own treacherous pasts, and each other's polar opposite differences clashing. This emotionally touching and powerful novel is perfect for anyone who loves realistic fiction books about friendship, loss, and aspiration. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Thomas, and I have just read the book Glitch. I've read many time-traveling books before, but Glitch blows them all away. Glitch has a never-seen-before take on time-traveling. People are born with Glitch DNA, allowing them, with the proper equipment, to time-travel. Every country has an academy in a remote location to train the next generation of Glitchers. Glitchers' main duty is to protect the past from butterflies, people who want to change it. At the Glitch Academy in America, cadets Reagan Fitz and Elliot Mason, who have a fierce hatred for each other, both train to be glitchers. But one day they receive a letter that will turn their whole world upside down. It is amazing to see how their friendship grows over the course of the book. And you don't need to know any history. It explains everything perfectly, and you'll probably learn something new. Some of the time periods it takes you to are Washington, D.C., 1865, Boston, Massachusetts, 1773, in New York City, 1911. Glitch has action, adventure, humor, and friendship, which all make a perfect book. So read Glitch. Hi, my name's Eve, and my book talk is on The In-Between by Rebecca K. S. Ansari. Corpus Cerny started when his parents divorced. It left him torn and took away from his friends and barely talking to his mom except to check his little sister's blood sugar. Cooper comes home from school one day, scavenging the house for his mother's laptop. When he finds Jess reading about a mysterious train wreck with a missing boy, he decides to turn the other way from the mystery, but it bounces right back at him when the insignia on the little boy's jacket appears on his neighbor's. The thought that his neighbor could be a clue to a 1900s mystery gets him looking. The perfect family next door who renovated the house might not be as perfect as rich as it seems. Taking one step further, one look more, and taking a perspective into hand is a lot more helpful than he thought. Can one peer through a chattered window change everything? I definitely recommend this book to people who like dark mysteries and fantasies. It is an amazing book with an interesting plot that keeps you reading. What I love about this book is that it will, like, you can't really assume what will happen next, and the plot twists and new discoveries will shock you. Bye! Thank you, sixth grade, seventh grade reading ambassadors. You're up. Hi, my name is Caroline, and I will be telling you all about an extraordinary book I read called The Shape of Thunder, which I loved. November 11th, the day Mabel died. Cora's only sister, one of her best friends. 
November 11th, the day Parker changed everything. Quinn's only brother, someone who she could always count on. Cora, a 12-year-old girl, lost her older sister Mabel in a school shooting. She's been struggling with the fact that her sister is no longer with her. Not only did she lose her older sister, but she lost her best friend too as a result of the shooting. Quinn, Cora's former best friend, had an older brother who was the shooter. As you can imagine, the relationship between Cora and Quinn is complicated. Cora partly blames the shooting on Quinn, and this causes their friendship to drift miles apart. On Cora's birthday, she receives a box from Quinn. She ignores it for days, but her grandmother finally convinces her to open the box. When she opens the box, it reveals several articles on time travel. The articles spark her interest in time travel, and she wonders if this could be the solution. As they work together to try to save their siblings, their relationship is strengthened. Read The Shape of Thunder by Jasmine Warga to find out just what happens to these two former friends. Hi, I'm Molly and I read Just Like That by Gary D. Schmidt. After losing her best friend Holling in a tragic accident in the summer of 1968, which by the way is during the Vietnam War, Mary Lee Kowalski goes off to St. Helene's Preparatory Academy for Girls where she struggles to navigate the sporting school's traditions, new friendships, and her insecurities. The challenges at her new school make it even more difficult to deal with the blank which is the empty sadness that dawns on her whenever she is thinking about Harlan. Meanwhile, Nat Coffin has also wound up in Maine at St. Helene's with a pillowcase filled of money on the run from his dark past. Nat runs from the world from place to place all over the United States, trying to escape his trauma and the mob boss who is chasing him, and hopes to finally find a safe harbor at St. Helene's Preparatory Academy for Girls. Luckily, Nat and Mary Lee take a shining to one another, Although Mary Lee misses Holling more than anything, and Matt never wants to endanger new people in his life, the two learn to trust one another and use their friendship Gary to heal. D. Schmidt's writing is amazing. In this book, there are zero pictures, yet on every single page, I could see the scenes play out of my mind. Like, for example, Mary Lee rolling her eyes at whatever dumb thing her classmates were saying, or how badly Matt was suffering, trying to escape from his past. I would recommend this book to anyone that likes the books Fish in a Tree, Alabama Moon, Smile, and Wednesday Wars. The next time you're at the Darianne Library, check out Just Like That by Gary D. Schmidt. Hi, my name is Spencer Wong. You may be unaware, but Valtos is neglecting thousands of innocent creatures every single day. We at ARSE, that is, the Alliance for the Rescue of Slugs and Eels, are giving a home for the homeless and a voice for the voiceless. In the book, The Good for Nothings by Daniela Banas is about a girl named Cora. She and her robot friend, Elio, are famous criminals among Cora's criminal family, the Soros. Cora has a problem, though. Elio's memory core is deteriorating. Cora is on a mission to save up and buy a new and bigger body for Elio, but it costs a lot more than she expected. Throughout the story, Cora and Elio stick together and meet new people and experience life-threatening situations for both of them. I would recommend this book to anyone who enjoys the genre of science fiction and to people who enjoy thrilling adventures, aliens, spaceships, and exciting cliffhangers. My name is Maya, and I recently read a book about Avery Kylie Grams, a 16-year-old high school girl who lives with her older sister Libby. After her mother passed, Avery and her sister have both been working part-time jobs and still tight on money. One day, Avery is called to the principal's office, where a young man tells her that she must be present in Texas for the recitation of the will of billionaire Tobias Hawthorne. To the surprise of all present, Avery has been left $46.2 billion, almost the entire fortune of the twisted, puzzle-loving man. The only catch? Avery has to live in his manor along with his four grandsons, two daughters, son-in-law, and mother-in-law, all of whom were not pleased with the results of the will. If you enjoy continuously changing enigmatic books such as Escape from Mr. Lemontel's Library, you will love The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, where Avery plays to win the wicked last game of Tobias Hawthorne, where nothing is as it seems. A serial eye snatcher, a mysterious sinkhole, weird rules like no wearing red, and a suspicious energy company who seems to be too involved in a small town. This is all normal for Whispering Pines. Ray is a girl who is searching for answers about the mysterious disappearance of her dad. She's excited about moving to Whispering Pines and getting a fresh start. As Ray settles in, everyone in Whispering Pines seems to be a little bit strange. 
like Vivian, a girl who refuses to take off her huge backpack, or Dr. Anderson, whose eyes are a little bit too blue and a little bit too bright. Plus, all of the Green On employees who seem to know everything about everyone. When her mom decided to move to Whispering Pines, Ray was confused. Why would her mom move her to a town where kids have been disappearing left and right, and coming back with their eyes taken out of their head? Luckily, she moves in next door to Caden, a boy who has lived in Whispering Pines his entire life. His mom has a ghost hunting business, ridding people's homes of evil spirits. Caden has always been different, and people are wary of him because of his mom's business. Ray and Caden become friends, and they quickly realize something is not right with Whispering Pines. As more kids start disappearing rapidly, tensions rise, and Ray and Caden team up to find out what sort of evil is hiding amongst them. But what they discover leads them to even more questions, like which one of them is next. Mm -hmm. If you like Stranger Things, then you would definitely love this book. Make sure to stop by the library and pick up Whispering Pines by Heidi Lang. Hello, my name is Claire, and I will be talking to you about your next great summer read, Lupe Won't Won't Dance by Donna Barba Higra. Lupe has championed causes her whole life, from more her race options on standardized tests to complaining to BBC about the endless wait between Doctor Who seasons. Lupe is also going to be the first Mexanese, meaning of Asian Latinx heritage, girl to pitch a no-hitter in the major leagues. But in order to meet Fuli Hernandez, her favorite pitcher, she needs all A's in all her classes. And when Coach Solden tells the whole class they'll be square dancing PE, no way is Lupe going to be Coach's marvelous Ducey doer. Lupe Won't Dance tells the story of changes and friendships and the courage to stand up for yourself and others. This riveting story will keep you excited and laughing through the whole book and will leave an after trail of memorable moments from this book. Lupe Won't Won't Dance is a realistic fiction book that defies every excitation and yet will always keep you on your toes. Even if you're a square dancing fan, before long you'll be rooting for Lupe until the end. If you're ready for a unique, honest, and amazing summer reading novel, and Lupe Won't Won't Dance is the perfect book for you. Hi, my name is Flynn, and here's my book talk about The In-Between by Rebecca K. S. Ansari. Cooper's father abandoned him, and he has struggled with this for the past four years. Next to his house, there's a girl who always appears to be unattended and is always watching over them. While looking through a computer shared by his family, Cooper notices a story his sister was looking at, a literal train wreck, where one victim that was not identified had a seal on the recognized from the girl. After more investigation, he discovers a chain of accidents with an unidentified victim who just happened to have the seal. It all gets more peculiar when he finds out that nobody other than his sister and a new friend can see the girl, or even the house she lives in. Working together with his sister and his new friend Gus, Cooper must uncover the truth behind these disasters and find the reason why the girl is he here now. Read The In-Between by Rebecca K.S. Ansari for a Stranger Things-like adventure and to find out more. Hi, I'm Ray Rattels and I'm going to be talking about the story Clues to the Universe by Christina Lee. Clues to the Universe is a story about an unlikely friendship. Rio has always had a passion for Rocket, just like her father. After her father died suddenly in a car accident, she decides to honor him by finishing the model rocket they, that they started together. But soon, Ro realizes that he can't build a model rocket alone. Benji has always had a passion for art. He wants to become a great comic book artist, just like his father, whom he's never met. But he's struggling in school and might even get pulled out of his art classes. Without some extra credit, he's sure that he's doomed. Thankfully, due to a folder mix-up, Ro and Benji realize that they can help each other out. Working together to help finish Ro's rocket for the science prayer, she and Benji find out that they have more in common than they thought. Learn it's much easier to face all of life's obstacle with a new friend. If you love just like that, you'll love Close to the Universe. Or if you love heartfelt stories of friendship, families, and growing up, you'll love this book. Bye! Thank you, 7th grade. And thank you to our viewers. We really hope you pick up one of these books and enjoy it as much as we did. But wait, Mia, where would I get one of these books from? Great question. All the books will be available physically at the library, whoa, this summer. Or if you prefer an ebook, you can check them out digitally via Libby or Sora. Summer reading kicks off on June 21st, and we are so excited to have you back. We have events, fun challenges, and of course, prizes for you to win. More updates are coming soon, so keep your eyes out on our website at www.darianlibrary.org or our Instagram at darianlibraryteens. 
We hope you have a great summer and we can't wait to see you soon. Happy reading. Bye.